this time we're back with the empty jar cleaned it as best as we could we have coolant here it's actually 50 50 coolant Nissan coolant we are going to pour said coolant into this jar it's blue but once again I don't think the video is gonna convey that well enough so let's get something a little more dramatic the other coolant that's a little more dramatic is this Prestone 50-50 pre-diluted just like the other one and we are going to pour this coolant into the jar the color is a little more vivid isn't it okay there you go your luminous green fluid that's your Prestone 50-50 coolant that works with many non-dex systems once again we're gonna pour this coolant out then pour transmission fluid into it and then we can see what happens right and we're going to pour transmission fluid in there this is the Nissan um, Matic S transmission fluid it's supposed to be as pink as can be but it's a little spent so there's a little brown hue to it I said it is pink ish all right so here you go want to swirl it a little close to the camera it's able to pick up the pink just a little better not as dramatic as I'd like but I'll take it now what we're going to do is introduce coolant for example like a leaking radiator into the transmission fluid system let's see how it looks well, it takes a little longer than water but it does eventually settle out so once again transmission fluid although it is a hydraulic fluid it is an oil and when mixed with the trans with the coolant it is emissible I believe that is a term that do not mix well well we could try to force it to mix a typical transmission does not just sit there waiting a typical transmission is working and circulating and pumping and so we're gonna put a glove over there to help us seal this jar and let's pretend that we're as good as a transmission at this hmm look at that the nasty milkshake thing going on still oily so how it let go how it released looks like uh, what does that remind you of vinegar oil and vinegar dressing right which is quite an oxymoron trying to mix those things but anyway what we're gonna do is give it another good shake and then just like your transmission typically has a breather we're gonna crack this open to let it breathe and then time it it is now 754 let's see what happens to this mixture well there it is five minutes later doesn't look like this is gonna settle out any further than the other one had um, you can only see well it looks a little more yellow right now you can see hints of green if you look at the the, the wall of this glass over here so I personally don't think it's gonna be any more dramatic but still I'm a patient man so I'm gonna give it a little more time maybe even half an hour to settle out so I've given it a little more time and as you can see uh, not much has really changed my yellow is still pretty yellowish not too much green coming up as I said you have to look at the glass and I'm moving the lamp around so you can see that depending on how you look at the wall of the glass you might see a greenish tint but otherwise this is it this is as good as you can get 
the purpose of this experiment was to show you what could happen in the catastrophic uh, situation that your coolant leaks from maybe your radiator into your transmission fluid, right? The usually, uh, that usually happens for automatic transmissions because the radiator houses both the coolant compartment and a small compartment for transmission fluid. So if there's any disruption or if there's any uh, break in that boundary, then typically water gets into the, the other system and that's what you get because water is usually at a higher pressure. So there, um, I think for the intents and purposes of this experiment, this, ex this is successful. What I wanted to show or what I wanted to see as well for myself was that if you had coolant in your system, when you went to drain your transmission fluid, you're most likely to get coolant first because your drain for your transmission pan is going to be at the bottom. So when you open it for quite a little bit of time, you're going to end up getting just uh, not transmission fluid. And depending on how you get to this video, you might have seen the other part, but typically this is what I do when I drain fluids from my vehicle. This is the first point of contact. It's going to be a, a jug, be it oil, be it coolant, be it transmission fluid, I want something semi-clear so that if I do have different fluids in, uh, in, in a system that they're not meant to be together, you can usually see it settling out. So you should be able to see a boundary of water and whatever oil on top. So that is the whole purpose of this video. Good luck and may your fluids never mix. We've come back to my mixture about a day later. As you can see, you have transmission fluid at the top and coolant at the bottom. This is as separated as this mixture is going to get. And as you can see, well, obviously we have the advantage of natural light, but the green is a little more vivid this time. It's not just a tint of yellow like it was yesterday. But at the end of the day, I'm happy to see that this experiment, so minor not too detailed experiment shows you that if you have a mixture of coolant and transmission fluid you should be able to drain tra the coolant first because it settles at the bottom well i hope you got at least half the enjoyment i got out of running this experiment goodbye